Since 1988, Eli Gold has had the best seat in the house for Crimson Tide magic moments. His voice has added to the magic. He's intercepted the team, intercepted the team to the 10, to the 5, he cuts left, touchdown, 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 George Teague. Two wideouts right, two wideouts left, shotgun, Kitchens gets the snap, throws left, middle, makes the grab five, angles by right, three, two, one, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. When it comes to naming a favorite, he's got a quick answer. It would probably have to be, you know, second and 26. To, uh, to Devontae. Devontae Smith, touchdown Alabama. One play to win the national title. Uh, it would be tough to beat that. And thank God I got the call right. So, uh, you know, it'll, it'll, leave, it'll live on proudly. And for coach Nick Saban, a career sixth national championship, a number matched only by the legendary Paul Bear Bryant. Alabama is back as the champion of college football. How about that? But in March of 2022, Gold, who had only missed one Alabama broadcast since taking the job, was sidelined with a major health crisis. Went to bed one night, got up from this chair, walked into the bedroom, went to sleep. The next morning I got up and my legs didn't work. My legs didn't work. And so began a journey which saw Gold spend a combined 243 days bouncing between hospitals, rehab facilities, and nursing homes. He lost more than 140 pounds, getting down to 182. Friends would, you know, want to come and see me, but I wouldn't allow it. I didn't want anybody to see me lying there in a hospital bed with tubes coming out of me and a feeding tube going into me. I mean, I was a I was a sick boy. The doctor just said, we don't, we don't know what's going to happen. And when you hear anything like that, you're thinking, you don't know what's going to happen. You know, is he going to die? So he was always tough and fought hard, but there were definitely some times where we, you know, we thought, is this kind of it? Or, you know, what did the next few hours hold? So that was pretty scary. He had contracted pneumonia, which we didn't know about. Another time he had, you know, he had a UTI. And then the next thing we know, they're telling us he had sepsis. And I mean, he could have died from sepsis. You know, I just was lying there like a slug. Uh, it, it, that bothered me. And, and, and when I stopped, miss, started missing ball games, that's no good. That's no good. So, you know, it, it took a lot out of me. It did. Then shortly before Christmas, a blessing in disguise. I had a terrible case of hiccups. I mean, terrible. We're talking hiccup after hiccup after hiccup after hiccup with no time. Be I couldn't catch my breath. <sighs> I'm trying to breathe. Scary. A test showed cancer of the esophagus. It had been undiagnosed for seven months due to the fact the steroids Gold was taking to help restore his mobility masked the condition. Finally, we said, well, thank goodness. Now we know what we're treating. Let's get at it. We all sat down as a family and he said, I'm going to fight this. We're not going to give up. And it was, um, it was really, I mean, something he needed to do because he was looking forward to my daughter's wedding, looking forward to going back and doing football. And it was just, you know, he wanted to live. So Gold rang in the new year with a chemo treatment and in April rang the bell to signal the end of treatments. So now Gold is cancer free and ready to work again. He's been building up his strength by staying faithful to a workout routine three days a week at Therapy South. My strength is good, and you've been pretty faithful to your workout regimen is the first time that sentence has ever been used with Eli Gold as the subject. He knows that he has to keep working on this to continue to, to live the way he wants to and to do what he wants to. It's that Brooklyn in him, right? That That's that Brooklyn. That's that New Yorker. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs>
He's also been working on restoring that golden voice to full strength. He's had a couple of practice sessions doing play-by-play -play for the last two tied scrimmages. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. Jeff, as a broadcaster, you don't just sit down and talk. Now, it's a little different on a nightly news. You might have four minutes on a good day when weather doesn't go long. Uh, you might have four minutes to do. We, we sit and do, you know, seven, eight hours. You don't just sit down and talk. You've got to have the air, as we call it. You have got to have your air. Uh, and that's what I've been working on in preparation for the season. Getting my endurance, my stamina. You know, it's been 20 months since I've done a game. But here in the last, I guess, last three, four weeks or so, uh, I have been spending more time talking. Just, you know, why answer something in 12 words when you can answer it in 12 sentences? So uh, I've, been, I've been talking a lot. I've been starting to sing again in the shower a little bit, which is nothing that anybody needs to hear, but it is building my air up. And when he signs on from his familiar perch at Brian Denny Stadium September 2nd, those who know him best and love him the most will be cheering through the tears. I'll need this box of Kleenex with me. <laughs> it'll be uh, it'll be a very emotional day. Probably lots of tears and goosebumps and um, you know probably a lot of uh, pride too for you know how far he's come over the the past year and a half and you know just thinking back to some of those really low times where we thought you know we may never you know hear him speak again. Um, to hear him on the radio is going to be very powerful, very emotional time. I'm doing this now for all these people who have had cancer, who have survived cancer, for people who have lost family or friends to cancer, to the caregivers. That's who I'm working for now in addition to the Bama fans. And I'll be very honest, I never thought about it. I never thought about it. Uh, I was doing the broadcast for the Bama faithful. Well, now I'm doing it for a whole lot more people than just that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I realized that. And that's how it's going to change my approach when I walk into the booth. One of the many things that motivated Gold to get well was being able to walk his daughter Elise down the aisle. She and Stephen Underwood will marry in 2024. They didn't want to rush it, and we wanted to wait and see if I was going to be around, let alone if I was able to walk her down the aisle, but if I was going to be on this earth to do it. Considering everything that has happened, mm -hmm. how incredible of a moment would that be? Oh, probably have to be tranquilized that day or something. If, you know, if September 2nd is going to be emotional, probably wedding day will be, you know, 50 times times that. It'll be a special day. I look forward to it. So what will Gold say when he returns to the airwaves that September 2nd? I don't think it's going to be anything terribly, you know, special. You know, I'm just going to go and say it's wonderful to be back. And, you know, and I'll talk to those of you who, you know, were kind enough to send me hundreds and hundreds of cards and letters. I'll address that later. But, you know, you're not here to hear about Eli. You're here to hear about the tide getting set today to meet the Blue Raiders. And uh, I'll get right into it. That's what I do. You know, ever since I was, what, 16 years old or so, I've broadcast sporting events. That's all I know. That's all I know how to do. And that kept me going 